Hey everyone, my name is Sean and in today's video, we're going to be building a Relinquished deck. Relinquished is this card here, it's a level 1 ritual monster that was the boss card for Maximilian Pegasus in New Year Season 1. It's a fun card to play but never really been that powerful, where it can take your opponent's monsters and equip it to itself as um, a, a quick spell card. Uh, by doing so, it's a really good form of removal, but it's also really not that strong, but it's a fun deck to play nonetheless. This deck relies on summoning out ritual cards and also fusion cards. So our starters are kind of diverse in order to be able to summon both these types of cards as well. So for our ritual summons, we are playing pre-preparation of rites and free copies of preparation of rites. You search out your ritual cards and add them from your deck to your hand. Uh, preparation of rites can also get a spell back from your graveyard, your black illusion ritual that is. So these cards are really good searchers. Uh, we have also got three copies of Instant Fusion. This can directly summon out your Ice Restrict monsters from your extra deck to the field without having to go via your normal uh, polymerization route. But if you do want to do so, we have a spell card called Really Quick Fusion, which works as an extender, so we'll talk about that later. Now, our fusion spell unfortunately isn't searchable. There's no way to get this card from our deck to our hand other than one card called Synchro Fusionist, which we can't play in this deck at all. But uh, another way we can kind of utilize our fusion spell is by making Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. This is a link to monster that requires two effect monsters that can copy the co uh, effect of your fusion spell, send it to the graveyard, and then you can get the effect uh, that this card would have. So it's a way of kind of not having to rely on searching this in order to go for that. So we have also two copies of Tour Guide from the Underworld in order to make our Predator Plant Verte Anaconda a little bit easier. Other cards we have are also Foolish Burial. These cards here, our uh, main deck uh, defensive uh, hand trap kind of cards, uh, work in the graveyard as well. So Foolish Burial can send them uh, so they're alive for later on. And then we have two copies of Foolish Burial of Goods. Um, you can send your Black Illusion Ritual to the graveyard to recover it with preparation of rights if you want to. But also your Fusion spell, Raiding Quiz Fusion, has a card effect that works in the graveyard as well. So sending it to the graveyard is pretty good with Foolish Burial of Goods. And technically, I guess that's a way of searching it out. The last start here is Neo's Fusion, but I'm going to talk about that at the end in the end game section of this video. Extenders, our target for tour guide is Sangan. Sangan can search out all of our monsters, our Illusionist Faceless Magician, Millennium Eyes, and our Relinquished. So it's kind of got a lot of synergy with this deck. However, the card that you search um, during the turn this effect is activated cannot be used. So um, the best targets for it are these two cards here so that you can use them during your opponent's turn and get the benefit of them later on. But um, Sangin is really easy to use in this deck, and if you draw this card, you can normal summon it, for uh, then make uh, our Mirage to send to the graveyard, and then do your searches that way. We play three copies of Black Illusion Ritual, because we want to summon out our Ritual Monster, Monster Reborn, and three copies of Relinquish Fusion. This card is a bit of a double-edged sword, unfortunately. Um, it's kind of nice, but I kind of think it wasn't thought in design for what it clashes with one other card in the deck. And a couple of other options we have. Um, what's nice about this card is that you can use materials in your hand, field, or your graveyard to do your fu uh, ritual summon, uh, your fusion summon. And your uh, Millennium Eyes Restrict is really easy to summon because it's just relinquished and any effect monster, which is kind of nice. However, it will banish those cards uh, from your uh, from whenever you use them, which is kind of unfortunate because we have a lot of ways to revive our cards in this deck as well. And so by banishing them, you're not going to be able to use them anymore, which is kind of a shame. But it's still there, and we're going to use it to do our Millennium Eyes plays and our Thousand Eyes plays. Extra deck extenders, we have Cross Sheep. This is a fusion support card. You summon a fusion monster to one of the zones it points to, and then you can summon another card from your graveyard to the field. Allows you to make your Link free, so Link 4 is a little bit easier. Uh, we have Link Haribo uh, for your level 1 monsters. Uh, send them to the graveyard to get rid of whatever you, they were doing. Uh, Predator Palm to Anaconda we spoke about. And then we have Selene, Queen of the Master Magicians. This card is a spellcaster monster that can summon out other spellcasters from your graveyard or your hand. So you can get back your eyes restrict monsters or your relinquished and use them again and again and again. Removal options, this is where this deck kind of shines. Uh, we have obviously Relinquish, can take your opponent's monsters, but Millennium Eyes Illusionist also does the same. Um, it is a quick effect that can basically do what Relinquish does during either player's turn and it equips your monster to a Relinquished or an Eyes Restrict monster that you control. So it is a really, really great card. 
This card also works as an extender because when a relinquished or ice restrict monster is summoned, it adds itself back to your hand. A nice way to utilize this is to do Black Illusion Ritual, send this card, uh, tribute this card as the cost, uh, summon like relinquished, and then it will come back to your hand immediately. Really, really great card for this archetype. Relinquish Fusion can also remove cards on the field, same way as Illusionist does, you can banish it from your graveyard to equip one monster your opponent controls, so you have a lot of monster removal between these three cards here. But to help us out a little bit more, we're also playing three copies of Crackdown, uh, this is mainly because uh, we don't have a lot of defensive options in this deck, um, this deck isn't really good at going first, so having a Crackdown is kind of nice, because we can steal our opponent's monsters and take it during either player's turn that this card is live, so... It's there as an option as well. Other removal options, we have the Nightmare Package, Unicorn and Phoenix, um, Staples for any neat based deck, and then we have Zero Boros as well, which can be used with some other cards, can punish all cards on the field. Thousand Eyes Restrict is the same as Relinquish, basically, just a Fusion Monster version. Um, yeah, it's basically the same card as well, uh, but it does make it so that other monsters on the field cannot attack, so it's kind of defensive as well. And then Rainbow Neos, again, we'll talk about that card later on. Uh, defensive uh, options, Millenniumize is a quick effect so it technically is defensive, Crackdown is a trap so same thing, we have 3 copies of Solemn Strike to negate effects, and then we have 1 Illusionist Faceless Magician, uh, this is just a revival card for your cards, if a relinquished monster is destroyed by battle, ice restrict, or by card effect, you can summon this card to the field from your hand or uh, from, your, from the graveyard or your hand, and then uh, when this card leaves the field you can summon out a relinquished or uh, uh, fusion monster from your deck uh, from your from your deck from your graveyard back to the field so it just kind of allows you to maintain brawl presence a bit but this card isn't really that good um, it's a bit slow millennium eyes which it is uh, the defensive counterpart to thousand eyes while thousand eyes takes a monster millennium eyes will uh, quick effect take a monster but negate it but your opponent has to activate a monster effect in order for you to do this and um, any uh, monster this is equipped to cannot use its effects while this card is on the field so it's kind of like a negate for your deck then we have Appalooza, just more negates, uh, easy to make with Cross Sheep and Selene uh, IP Vascarena turns your Nightmare Unicorn and Nightmare Phoenix into def um, defensive options because you can do a Link Summon during your opponent's turn um, that card can also not be destroyed by uh, card effects so if you get to summon something bigger, say your um, uh, Boral Sword or your um, Appaloosa, it can be a little bit harder for your opponent to get rid of them. And then we've got Link Karibo as well, that can uh, stop your opponent's attacks as well. This deck's biggest weakness is its endgame options. It's got some fun control effects, but it doesn't do a whole lot of damage to your opponent. And so you do need a little bit of help in that regard. So we're playing one Boral Sword Dragon and one ne Rainbow Neos to kind of help us out. With that, obviously we have to play Neos Fusion and then we're playing the materials for this as well. It can be a little bit bricky for this deck, but you really need that kind of win condition because what I found in my testing is that I will get in situations where I'm like, okay, I'm controlling the board, but by the time that I can win the game, my opponent will get enough resources back in their hand and be able to kind of like counter attack. And you really want, don't want to do that. You want to slow the game down, simplify the game state, and then you want to kind of go for game as fast as possible while the game state is in your favor. So this is what there is to help us. I think it needs more than this though. Um, so if you can think of other options as well, go for it. I thought even more about more playing more copies of Neos Fusion, but that would make the deck really, really pricky, so I didn't do that. Um, and Boral Sword Dragon isn't always the easiest to summon, so yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a fun Z deck. Um, you can only do so much with it. It's only going to be so competitive, and it's kind of been a weakness of Relinquish cards all the time. Um, another thing about it, by the way, uh, Relinquish Anima, we are not playing in this deck. Unfortunately, this doesn't work with any of your cards. Um, all of your cards say Relinquished, or uh, they don't say Relinquished Monster. So you can't use Faceless Magician, you can't use Millennium Eyes, you can't use it for your Fusion Summons. It may as well not be a Relinquished card, so that's a big downside. I was really, really disappointed by that. In fact, I originally was going to build my whole deck around just level 1 monsters and go level 1 Link Summon this. But it doesn't work that way, so that's a really, really big dumber, uh, bummer for me. I think that's a kind of poor design uh, on Konami's part there. So, here is the entire deck. Let's quickly go through all the cards. Uh, I'm going to sort this by level of rank. Three Relinquished, three Emelianimize, three Sangan, uh, two Tour Guide, one Illusionist, one Neos, one Rainbow Dark Dragon, or Rainbow Dragon, whatever re one really. Uh, three Black Illusion, one Foolish Burial, double Foolish Burial Goods. 
uh, three instant fusion, one mod to reborn, one Neos fusion, three pre prep, uh, free prep, and three relinquish fusion, three crackdown, and three sudden strike. Then for extra deck, we have double millennium eyes, double thousand eyes, uh, one rainbow Neos, one link Rebo, one Almirage, one cross sheep, one uh, phoenix, uh, one unicorn, verte, Celine, Appaloosa, Boros Sword, and Zero Boros. So, let's go into some gameplay and talk about what this deck can do in action. So, this was a game of me playing it online. Um, I believe I was playing against a Cyber Dragon player, as evidenced by the Zane True Style archetype. And I was, I might be a bit slow in this video because I was still kind of figuring out what the cards do in interaction. And um, I think I had a long time to think here, like, I was trying to decide to myself, is it really worth going for um, your... Um, instant fusion or your sangam plays this early on you could technically speaking like let, look at this situation here i've got instant fusion sangam black illusion ritual i could use sangam go amirage get relinquished but then i've got an amirage on the field and he doesn't do anything and the relinquish isn't doing anything and i reveal my play to my opponent um so instead i just decided to set it i could have gone for a cross sheet play where i could have done instant fusion um summon out a uh, card um, normal summon Sangin, make cross sheep. Actually, I couldn't have even gotten that far, so I uh, scratch what I just said. Our first turn plays in this deck aren't really that good. Um, this deck is kind of really, really slow sometimes, and um, yeah, um, don't be surprised if you lose with this a lot. I lost a lot with this deck, so um, but it, it's still playable in a way and a sense. Now, Cyber Dragons are going to be really, really hard for this deck to deal with, particularly if they manage to get a couple of the gates. But, um, he, so he special summons Cyber Dragon and then normal summons Hurts. Hurts has a graveyard base effect. Uh, I do have Crackdown on the field, and I'm thinking to myself, when do I want to use the Crackdown? I'm probably going to use it for when he summons his Nate Monster. But then he has Machine Duplication, and that's going to be rough. Machine Dupe is going to let him summon out two more monsters with the same name as the monster that he chose. So he's going to get to summon up to two more Cyber Dragons. And it's just another threat that I have to now deal with. And I do have the cards for it, but I'll, uh, I um, you have to simplify the game state when you're playing this deck. Because most of your monsters can only deal with one monster at a time. Uh, rather than a field full of monsters. And it's not the easiest deck to play through the gate. So we definitely don't want to let Cyber Dragon Infinity hit the field. He didn't get Cyber Emergency as well, and I'm like, wow, this guy's hand is stacked. Um, he goes with Cyber Naxter, Cyber Dragon Naxter, I think, though, and I was a little bit surprised by that. Um, but it makes sense now because he's going to discard the final Cyber Dragon he had, which is why he did it summon two via Machine Duplication, and then his plan is to revive it from the graveyard. Now, I really didn't want him to get that many monsters on the field. Um, I could uh, deal with maybe one, but two of them, or maybe three of them, would be really, really bad. And a Cyber Dragon Infinity that's left on the field would be pretty much impossible for my deck to deal with. So I kind of have to try and stop him from doing that. He goes for a Cyber Dragon Nova anyway, and he uses two level fives to summon that out. And I really don't want Infinity to summon. So we're going to stop him here, and we're going to um, basically take his monster and steal, and steal it. Now, this is another kind of downside, in my opinion, with this deck. Um, because you're playing Ritual cards, it would be great if I could do a Crackdown and then use that card for Black Illusion Ritual. But the card that you use has to have a level. And if you take a Link Monster or you take a Xyz Monster, you can't use them for a Ritual Summon, which is kind of a downside. Um, Relinquish is an old school card anyway. Um, when the card was designed and put in the game, uh, Xyz Monsters and... Um, Link Monsters weren't in the game, obviously, so it was never designed to work with these cards. But it, uh, yeah, it makes Crackdown a little bit weaker than it can. You can take out Crackdown. You don't have to play Crackdown. Um, you can play a different um, option. I didn't want to play Hand Traps particularly because Hand Traps are really good interruptions, but our deck doesn't have a lot of ball presence as it is. And so um, I went for Crackdown. Just kind of went with the theme of the deck, but you don't have to play it if you don't want to. So our opponent uh, um, used our cards, summoned that Cyber uh, Chimeritic Fortress Dragon, and then he attacked Sangin, and we are going to go get Relinquished into our hand. And this is kind of the game state that you want. You want your opponent in a simplified game state where they um, uh, don't have too many options for you to deal with, and that way you can kind of kind of control the board quite easily. 
So we have Relinquish and Black Illusion, but we need a monster to use for it, and we drew it into Preparation of Right. My opponent F flips up and activates DNA Surgery. That will make it so that all cards on the field become Machine Type, which means that he is planning to summon his Cyber Dragons and uh, Contact views them away for Chimeratic Fortress Dragon, which probably means this isn't the only um, Chim copy of uh, Chimeratic Fortress Dragon in his extra deck. So I've got to be careful about that, that he's probably going to plan to use um, my cards as materials for his fusion plays. We use Instant Fusion to summon out Thousand Eyes Restrict and then we're going to use it to take away his card. So off it goes. And this is what I was talking about in terms of not having a, a lot of ways to do damage very quickly. So, oh, that's what I was testing Anima in this deck, by the way. Um, this is when I realized Anima doesn't do anything. Um, we play Black Illusion Ritual and we're going to get rid of the card we use for uh, Instant Fusion because it will destroy itself anyway. So we might as well use it, but that's it. Uh, I summon Relinquish to the field. Uh, we do have this really cool animation though. Um, nice to see that. First time, I, uh, first time I've ever summoned Relinquished out in Legacy of the Jewelers, so being able to see the animation is kind of cool. And then uh, we have uh, Preparation of Rights. We're going to get another copy of Relinquished to our hand and get back our Ritual spell so we can keep our hard count, uh, card count out. But like we're in a situation here where... Uh, we clearly have control of the board, but we can't really do anything about it because we have uh, very, very small monsters, and that's the weakness of this deck. One thing I did used to do with this deck when I tried playing it years ago was we used to play the card Sukiyomi, our Book of Moon, and you would flip your card face down and then keep on taking your opponent's monsters, which was cool. Particularly with Instant Fusion, you could play Instant Fusion, Thousand Eyes. Uh, take your opponent's monster, flip it face down, and it wouldn't be destroyed by instant fusion. And you just keep on using that as a flip effect and taking your opponent's monsters to break their boards. But um, that was back in the days when the game was a lot slower. So um, it's uh, the game is way too fast for uh, that kind of control right, right now. But you can still do that as an option if you want to. He makes Cyber Dragon dry, uh, dry, and then uh, he's going to attack Relinquished. If Relinquished had a card equipped to it, it wouldn't be destroyed by the battle. But it doesn't, so it doesn't matter really. And then, um, yeah, he's an attack and pass. And we really do need a monster to make this all work with. And we drew it into Millennium Eyes Illusionist, so that's perfect. So, we're going to play Black Illusion Ritual. And then, um, we're going to use our Millennium Eyes as re a resource for it. So, um, uh, Black Illusion Ritual, choose Relinquished, choose Millennium Eyes um, as our material, summon Relinquished, and that comes straight to the field. Here comes the animation again. This is one thing I'm going to break miss with Master Jewel. Uh, these nice animations, but I guess they're not needed. They're kind of a luxury. But um, I do like the animations and seeing them. And then um, we're going to get to get Illusion straight back to our hand. And so that is another interruption that we have during our turn and our opponent's turn. Then we're going to play Relinquished and then take away Dry. And I was a little bit worried at this point because I thought to myself, not worried, but um, concerned. Because uh, if he contact fuses away my Relinquished, in the upcoming turns, it also makes it so that my Millennium Eyes can't be used. And that's kind of another downside with cards like this. Um, any cards or quick spell cards in general, they kind of have their weakness in the game where um, if you don't have the monster to equip them to, they can't be used, obviously. So, um, Contact Fusion is really good against this deck here. We draw into Tor Guide though. Tor Guide is really good. And there's a lot that you can do with Tor Guide. Tor Guide into Sangin, they make Cross Sheep or... IP Mascarena, or um, I even thought about running Halky Firebrax in this deck because um, I was initially going to run Unexpected Die, which is a card that special summons a normal monster from your deck, and that was going to be a way to get to Thousand Eyes Idol. And then you could also run maybe a level one tuner as well, go for Halky Firebrax play. Um, I was also trying to do Jet Synchron plays as well because Jet Synchron is a level one monster. And I thought, okay, I can use that Synchron to summon Anima. And then if I want to extend further, I can summon it back to the field and make Predator Plant Verte Anaconda. But that's not going to work because um, Anima, unfortunately, doesn't count as a relinquished card for most of these effects. So we had to kind of scrap that idea. But, uh, yeah, it would have been nice to do that uh, if we had Jet Synchron plays in this deck. Um, he fills yourself with your ritual plays. He gives you negates to summon on your turn. And it would have made your going first boards a little bit stronger. But um, 
Another thing with Relinquish deck as well, you, you kind of have to decide whether you're going to use your resources preemptively or not. And because um, he has no monsters on the field, I kind of don't want to summon my monsters or waste their effects. I want to kind of have that resource ready. So I'm not really using my cards here, but now we're going to summon that tall guy um, because I think in this situation, we could probably do enough damage to go for game here. So we're going to summon that Sangam, spread out our columns to play around Mech Knights. Although the middle column is already kind of set up for a Mech Knight play. Although I'm pretty sure he's not playing Mech Knight Cyber Dragon. And then, which isn't a bad idea actually. So Mech Knight Cyber Dragon could be good because uh, they're all light monsters. And then we're just going to poke for damage. So attack with one. Uh, that's going to do a thousand damage. This isn't enough for game, um, unfortunately. But it's still pretty good. Uh, I didn't really want to link away the Relinquish monster as well. Because... Obviously, if I uh, get rid of the Relinquish monster, I can't make Millennium Eyes Illusionist live. But having a Relinquish fusion actually could have made that easier. Because I can do a fusion summon during my opponent's turn. And that would have made Illusionist live. So he has 600 life points left. And um, I thought about maybe actually going for that play. I'm at, um, but we're just going to pass and end it there. This is when I decide to use IP Mascarena. Because then we have the option of... We had a link summon during my opponent's turn, and that's what replaced uh, our anima. He sets one card in the field, and at this point, it's basically a done deal. We basically won this game. Oh, I also have one for one in this deck. Don't play one for one. You can't use one for one in this deck. Uh, it was back, it was when I was doing the jet synchron stuff, and um, yeah, you there are no level one targets in the deck right now that you can summon with it. So one for one's a dead card. Uh, yeah, don't bother using it at all. But then we have, um, so at this point we're just going to win the game here. And I'm just going to probably go for something like Nightmare Unicorn. Um, keep it simple. I mean, we could do cross sheet plays. Um, we could say Link Away does two and then make Celine and go for uh, further plays in there. Um, I don't know how many spells we have in the graveyard. I think we have more than three between our two decks. I know he plays Cyber Emergency. So there's that. And I have, I have preparation of uh, rights in my graveyard. I'm like a Legion Ritual, so I could have done Selene. But I'm just going to go for Nightmare Unicorn. Uh, keep it simple. And we're going to shuffle away our opponent's card. I also activate the effect of Sangin as well to get a search. And then my opponent quits. So, funzy deck. Not a competitive deck by any means. But there we are. That's a Relinquish based deck. And if you want to play this, I can give it a go. Let me know how it goes for you. Thank you guys as always for watching this video. I'll see you soon. Take care.